Hello everybody and welcome back to the Burt Not Bought YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to install a differential into a K-series transmission, specifically a wave track limited slip into a transmission with an SQS 6-speed dog box. So if you think what we've done up until now is redneck, this is going to take the case. Today, we're talking about this dude right here and what you need to do to install it in this dude right here. Now, there is a long write-up on this thing online that explains how it works, and almost every person that's selling it just copies and pastes WaveTracks write-up on their product description. So you can go read it yourself and kind of understand it there as well, and there's a couple YouTube videos. However, the basics are that this is essentially a helical differential but it has their claim to fame in here that essentially if tire slips and starts to spin, it will lock it to the tire that is not. So this thing will transfer power in a wheel lift condition. The whole reason we're all here. So when you get the differential out of the transmission, unfortunately I already assembled it because I made this video already and I messed it up and I'm an idiot. So this thing's fully assembled. I'll be taking some clips from last night, however. Imagine this really, really cool part that's all machined black uh, steel in the center there was this thing. So this is the original factory CRV all-wheel drive diff here. And essentially, these are lefty tighty righty loosey bolts. So spin all these to the right to take them out in a alternating pattern. Let's not be Neanderthals here. Take those bolts out. The rings may fall off, they may not. You might have to help them with a rubber mallet, but they'll they'll come down. They're just sitting on this machine surface right here. Right here, camera, thank you. And they'll, they'll pop off. However, once you get those off, take the bolts out, set them aside, clean them. And then to get the bearings off, I used this guy here. This thing is called a PosiLock Model 104. This thing is super, super nice because if you spin this, it essentially like locks the fingers into the bearing and they can't come out. That's the nicest gear puller I've ever used. And my buddy Luke gave it to me. So thanks, dude. Huge, huge help there. I also have this little guy right here that I made. It's basically just a bolt with a nut on it, but I have this washer down here to act as an aligner these two to sit it on, and then the top one to just add rigidity, and then the bolt head. That actually worked pretty nice. So these bearings are not on here super tight. They came off pretty easy, so that wasn't a huge fight. But in order to put them back on, cue video from last night. I've looked up videos on how to install these things properly, and I've seen so many videos where guys are just hammering these diffs, or these bearings on the diff with like a dead blow, or a piece of wood and a hammer. It's so much easier than that. You don't need a hammer to put that on there. You need one of these. So set this baby right here to about 200 degrees, maybe a little bit more, which is not a temperature that these bearings uh, won't see, right? Transmissions easily get up to 200 degrees. I mean, they're bolted to an engine that's essentially 200 degrees. So with the heat they're generating from fluid shear and everything, 200 degrees is not unreasonable for that bearing. There's no rubber in it, there's just the steel guard. So what we're gonna do is turn this baby up to just over 200 degrees, set it to about 15 minutes, and we're gonna throw that bearing in there, let it get nice and warm. Pick this up, put it on there, and then you'll see no hammering needed at all. So for this diff specifically, that still uses a vehicle speed sensor on the differential, You'll also need to obviously harvest this bearing and you'll need to get the ring gear off as well. Again, the ring gear, you just heat it up 200 degrees, use the toaster oven. It's the main tool to assemble a differential. So heat this all up to 200 degrees and it just falls right on. Make sure they're fully seated so you don't have to hammer them down at all. Um, the transfer driven gear and the ring gear um, also are a pretty tight fit to the outside of the case. They probably would have gone on with just some finagling cold 
but I also uh, heated them up to, these were like maybe 180 degrees, I heated these up too. They weren't that warm, there's a lot of thermal mass here. So I pulled them out before the timer went off, they weren't super hot, but they slid right on. Um, and then these bolts, um, they, they need lube before you put them in, they're reverse thread, so they are lefty tighty righty loosey. Um, but I uh, put some Motul Gear Competition 75140 on these, which is the oil that Motul recommend, or sorry, that WaveTrack recommends you put in the transmission. And then uh, SQS also recommended that same gear oil. So that is what I use to put these bolts in. These are not torqued yet. So I gotta look up the torque spec for that. Glad yesterday Brett was here to save the day. So we now have both bearings on the speedo ring and both gears. Well, we gotta torque these bolts. All right, so first things first, you gotta fixture this thing so it's not flipping and flopping all over the place while you're trying to torque these bolts because fine threads are a little bit of a different animal. They're tight. So I have it wrapped in a towel, unfortunately, because my vise won't go wide enough to grab the transfer driven gear between those two blocks of wood, which is the way you're kind of supposed to do it. But luckily it's honestly really not that tight. So it's not like I'm crushing the gear or anything. So right now I have this thing set to 20 foot pounds. I shot these in with that gun, so they may be a little over 20 right now, but I better double check them. Go up to 40. No. 60. Most of them turned there, so we're gonna send them home at 83 foot-pounds. That is 80, one, two, three foot-pounds. All right. That doesn't lock anymore. Really sucks, this is my grandpa's. Make sure this seat's clear one more time. Take this diff. These bearings sit down in much easier. Just watch your fingers. That looks really good in there. So now I need the gearbox. So we'll set that on there and then we'll check the clearance right here. What we're looking for here, this is an 80 millimeter shim. And this was the one that was installed from factory. And it should be good because these differentials between the stock one there and this one are the exact same height. So this should be good, but we're gonna set it in here and just double check it. Don't want it, there to be any problems with this one. Um, we're missing uh, one of our 14 by 20 mil dowels there. That goes in there. Let's make sure let's wipe this out. This bench is becoming a disaster area. These guys need replaced, so we're going to pop this one out too. Well, like I said, right in front of my face, this bench is becoming a mess. So I need to buy a new one of these. Replace this later. Put this in our little jump pile here. Go. All right, 
right, so it says to torque, to check this, to torque several bolts. So we'll just grab, I don't know, one here, one every other, you say? because these actually all only tor torque to uh, 20 foot-pounds so okay those are torqued so now we gotta check the clearance in there to see if it is in spec in the service manual it says the spec of clearance is 0 to 0.1 millimeters which I don't know how you can have a spec that's 0 because anything less than 0 is 0 so anyway we're gonna hope there's some clearance in here around 0.1 millimeters all right well unfortunately in the middle of the one thing I wanted to show my camera died so essentially we are allowed right in that area dead center. It's tough to see. There is the transmission case. Then step down, there is the uh, shim, then a gap, then the differential bearing. And you wanna be between zero and 0.1 millimeters is the spec. This transmission specifically is 0 0.05 millimeters. So this is right dead center in the middle of the spec that is okay to ship. So what we're going to do now is pop the case back off, get the gear stacks put back in it. But first, I'm gonna clean up some of this mess I've made. So considering this particular video is mainly how to install the differential into your transmission, I'm not gonna record this next part because it is putting these SQS dog box gear stacks into the transmission, and I made an entire video on that. So if you're wanting to see that, please go visit that video. It's actually pretty interesting. It's one of my better videos, to be honest with you. But this video is not about how to put this stuff in here. So go visit that video, and then we're gonna trim the fat on this one and revisit once those gear stacks are in. like that we have a CRV all-wheel drive gearbox with an SQS European Civic Type R six-speed dog box conversion gear set in it and a wave track differential. This is definitely the baddest transmission I've ever owned and I really hope that I won't have to work on it very much. That was kind of the idea behind putting that much money into it. Now once I get this car up and going I will speak to the robustness of this gearbox because I'm not entirely sure. Now, it's pretty stout, but you know, we'll see. So if it you know doesn't work out, not out too terribly much, but if it does, then great. I have a six speed dog box that works. So that will be way, 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 way down the road. But for now, that concludes everything I wanted to do to the inside of this transmission. And I really appreciate you guys stopping by to hang out with me for this install process. I hope I helped, you know, if I did, let me know. If there was anything you wanted to see or you didn't see, also let me know. I appreciate it, and I'll see you guys on the next one.